Damien Duff for Blackburn with Andy Cole available outside him and Hakan Sukul lurking on the edge of the box he's back into Duff though who's gone for goal that's a fine stop by Kylie because that was travelling and the Charlton goalkeeper in action inside three minutes from Damien Duff typical surging run from the Irish international and solid hands from Kylie seven weeks without a win for Alan Kerbishley's Charlton Stuff again. It's a bit of an agricultural challenge from Kishishev. No card, but it will be a Blackburn Rovers free kick. Too much doubt about it. Referee Jeff Winter was too far away. Taking it quickly too. This is Gresco. And he's beaten his marker. And it's in towards Cole. What a miss and what a let off for Charlton. You've almost put your mortgage on Cole, burying that. Good play from Gresco. Perfect cross. And Cole couldn't hit the target. And clearance from Friedel on by Sukur. And here's Duff. Still Damien Duff. And Blackburn Rovers lead. 34 minutes gone. Really well taken. It started with Friedel's long clearance, he applauds the finish. And Damien Duff has beaten his fellow countryman Dean Kiley. After Sukor's flick, he got above Rufus. Good play with both feet here from Duff. And he tucked it away very nicely. Rovers are value for the lead. As they chase a place in Europe. Charlton season is rather stagnating. Good close control and a good finish. It stuffs ninth of the season. This is Powell. Didn't see too much of him in Blackburn territory. He's got the cross in, very deep. Robinson's there. No real alarms for Brad Friedel better though from Charlton it's an awkward ball to get any power on John Robinson was just hanging in the air for an age got up really well but it's an easy meet for the goalkeeper and Charlton have lost it this is Colt and Duff has continued his run he needs some support here Andy Colt and he's got it from Duff it's a good chance this well, the run was superb, the finish wasn't. Well, that's what Duff's all about. Those surging runs from midfield, picked out really well by Andy Cole. But the eventual shot was way off target. He got round the back of Charlton again, though. We have had plenty of warning about Damien Duff. He scored one, and he could have had a couple more as well. Simpson is pretty pleased with what he's seen but he'd like his team to have at least another goal to show for their efforts and they're coming forward again now two gun this is David Dunn let's go outside him and plenty of time to measure across oh Rufus sliced that and in the end Fortune was happy to put it over the top for the corner could have gone anywhere off Richard Rufus again Blackburn getting plenty of players forward and Charlotte full stretch there awkward ball for a defender Fortune was there to cover all Blackburn at the moment well played by Gresco that time cross is very deep and over the top of Kylie's crossbar. He's everywhere though, Damien Duff. After the fabulous World Cup he had, he's followed up with an excellent league campaign for Blackburn. Charlton have hardly threatened in the second half so far. Now maybe they might. Parker has dispossessed Duff. He's 
but options both sides here, Scott Parker. Ricochet has produced a clever dummy, and Kaczewski, good stop by Friedel, and the ball cannon behind off Henningberg, who didn't know much about it. And Charlton could so easily have been level there. It's a clever dummy, this, and the shot from Kaczewski was travelling, beaten away by Friedel. And Berg so nearly put through his own goal. have a corner Flickcroft that is a fabulous stop from Kylie. it may just have clipped the bar as well I don't think you can believe he didn't go in Gary Flickcroft stunning reaction from the Charlton goalkeeper a bit of glove and a bit of bar and over the top York and Cole combining where have we seen that before that's that with Duff again it's been a nightmare for Luke Young all afternoon and he's taking him on again it's in towards York it was a really cheeky effort and Kylie just about got his legs in the way and kept it out as ever the smile on Dwight York's face it would have been a little broader if it had gone in once again Duff was the creator and that was very clever and a little unfortunate it wasn't too nothing Alan Kirbish is not impressed by what he's seeing Done. Duff just playing at their own pace at the moment and Cole and York have combined again it's Andy Cole in for Blackburn stopped by Kylie. it's come for Gillespie and it was Tal who got in the way of it and it's gone behind for the corner well Blackburn really should be out of sight in this game now it's only one is anyone's guess Hull was in again here, got it on target, good stop by Kylie, and then Gillespie found Powell in the way. Now here's a big moment for young Jamal Campbell-Rice, who is coming on to make his Charlton debut in place of Kevin Lisby, he's just 20, Campbell-Rice, he had a spell on loan at Leighton Orient earlier in the season, got a couple of goals for them. Not much time left for Charlton to find a leveller. In goes Parker, miss Q. Panic at the back for Blackburn. And they're appealing for handball, they're not going to get it. Scott Parker's eyes lit up for a moment there. And he didn't make any kind of connection. And Friedel's goal survives intact. Real scramble inside that six yard box. the mixer again it came off Parker there's no offside this is Campbell Rice it's good well to keep possession Powell plays it back in again and it might fall here for Parker another miscue that's not a bad effort and a fine save by Friedel the chart has suddenly come alive here in the dying minutes This chance was the one that Parker missed kicked. That was a brilliant effort and a fine tip over. Have one look at the watch and one look is all we need. Graham Seamus' Blackburn take the points. They needed a couple of fine saves from Brad Friedel late on. The only goal of the game coming from Damien Duff after 34 minutes. It's finished here and he would part Blackburn 1, Charlton 0. Goals have been a bit hard to come by lately. Three today, though. Yeah, you know, um, we've been working hard and trying to get people in the box and take a chance when we get. You know, we've had a little pressure, Sam. We ain't scoring enough goals. I think, you know, it shows if we keep, keep going and keep plugging away, we'll get chances and show today. You wrapped it up in injury time. You really meant that one. How, how do you rate that and all the goals you've scored, that one? Yeah, one of the better ones, you know. It's just important to always score a goal so late on it sort of just kills the game. And it was one of those when you thought it's the last minute, just, just try and shoot at the target and one of those ones that goes in. You've been playing a bit deeper. Do you enjoy playing back there a little bit more? Yeah, sometimes, you know, you get, sometimes you get a bit more of the ball pin and how the game goes and the arts me um, against Man City just to do a bit because Klaus is injured and we really enjoy it in there as well as I like playing up front, but, you know, once it helps the team and gets points on the table, that's all that sort of matters. 
The way the home form's been going, well, when you took the lead but only kept it for 70-odd seconds, was it tempting to let your heads drop at that point? What, what was going through your mind? I mean, because it's, it's been up in the bus for the majority of the season. I mean, I've had at a time where it's no nil we go one up and concede straight away. So it's disappointing, but it just shows that we wasn't going to make our head drop. We had to respond in the right way, and which we did. We kept plugging away, and it showed. It's your first victory over Blackburn at the Valley for 17 years. Did you go into it thinking that, that you know, that sort of thing with your home form the way it was? No, we know that um, over the last two games we've actually got results here, picking up points, and we knew that if we got some points today it would all start hopefully coming together. And obviously we're winning last week and getting back-to-back -back wins. That was our main aim to try and get 17 points by the end of the day, and um, that's what we've got. Have you turned the corner, do you think? Um, still, still a long way to go, but hopefully we can start, start from there, going to next week against Leeds. Great goal. Barkley Club man of the match, Thanks Jason. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Before this, Alan, something like nine outings without a win. You got the victory here. It must be absolutely uh, tremendous. Yeah, I only class it as um, we didn't win last week. You know, last year is last year. It's all forgotten. It doesn't doesn't count for anything. And uh, as I just said in the previous interview, look at our last eight games and uh, uh, top six sides we played in that. We had a tough running last year. But, uh, you know, that's last year. I'm looking at this year. We had a massive disappointment last week at home to Chelsea. Should have won. Uh, got beaten the last minute. So to bounce back again today after the start of this game, you know, goal down after two or three minutes and losing Gary Rowe after five, to bounce back, they've done fantastic. Now, Diokayev got the goal after a minute. Did that stun you? Well, the way they started stunned me. You know, they um, basically played four up front. I wasn't too sure how Bolton was going to play today, but they played four up front early on and uh, they got the ball in the box and lots of challenges. And... Uh, I think Warhurst hit the shot. It was a fantastic shot, but uh, not one of my players reacted, and Jorkiev did. So we was one down, and then I think we rode it a little bit. First 15 minutes, they had a couple of opportunities perhaps to make it two, and then we gradually got back in the game. And uh, up until we, we we scored the second goal, I think we was in control really, uh, without threatening too much. But we scored the second goal, and then a natural thing is to to sit off and drop off and uh, invite a bit of pressure, which we did. And you know, Dino made some great saves in the end. Sam Allardyce seems to be upset because of two missed penalty decisions. He feels that he's been robbed of, of a result here. Oh, does he? I mean, I, I don't know about... It's, 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 um, you know, when you look at the video, you never could look at it then. But um, I saw Richard Rufus um, challenging and, and, and to me he had a free header and um, he got he got balked. So uh, I think the referees um, are looking for these, these, these sort of challenges now. Holding, certainly. I mean, last week we got a penalty... Um, sorry, we would have had a penalty against Gallus uh, for, for Chelsea, and uh, but we ended up scoring from it. And um, you know, I think the referees are looking for it. And I thought we got, I thought we got bolts. I don't know about the one he's on about if it's one for him. Uh, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Last week, I, I was very disappointed um, with the referee's decision to send Konchesky off, uh, but accepted the result because you can't do anything about the result. You can only do something about perhaps uh, decisions like that afterwards. And uh, Let's see what the video shows. Now, will you be celebrating tonight? 300 games in charge of uh, Is that Charlton? Right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I know we're back in it again. You know, you sort of played last week and massive disappointment. And as I said, it took a long while to get over it. And then you go and win today. And then, you know, you've got two, much, two injuries which can keep players out for some time. So, you know, back up, you know, back in it now. And let's get on with it. You know, the season started. Now, Charlton fans might be asking tonight why you allowed Mark Kinsella to go. What would you say to them? Well, I think um, it's well documented what I said yesterday, but basically, you know, clubs have to move on. And Mark has been fantastic for, for Charlton Athletic. I said it yesterday. I think he's, uh, his career has, has run parallel with the team. You know, we've had a fantastic seven years together. Um, and he was uh, a big favourite with the fans. But uh, I'm looking at people like Scott Parker and Klaus Jensen, who I don't think I can uh, stop them from uh, progressing. I've got Chris Bart Williams who, who played very well again today. So, you know, perhaps it was time for a change and, and Mark left the club on great terms with everybody. It's not a problem. And, um, you know, so nothing stays the same. That's all I was trying to say yesterday and uh, we wish him all the best. I know he's playing today. I hope he had a good game. Uh, but we've got to move on. And um, as I say, it was time for a change.